The Makita 40 volt XGT line is growing exponentially fast and I have to sit and drool over them while I'm looking at Acme tools because in my small town in Michigan, we do not have a lot of these sitting out so we can just walk into a store and see them. We have the new seven and a quarter inch XGT rear handle circular saw here. We're gonna go over this thing top to bottom. First, before we start cutting, I just wanna show you that this does have a nice soft start and a break, 6,400 RPMs in this saw. This thing should really do some great cutting. Let's take a listen. Pretty good break, nice soft start, nice quiet. Sounds like it's gonna be a nice saw. Let's go. This Makita 40 volt XGT saw is very similar to the dual battery 36 volt. So that would have two 18 volt batteries. We have a four amp hour 40 volt battery here. This saw weighs in at really close to 11 pounds where the other dual battery saw is closer to 12. So this is nicer to use, feels a little lighter, easy to handle. We have a depth of cut of two and nine sixteenths inches at zero degrees. Let's just go through this two by lumber, see what it does. That is absolutely nothing for this. Now the cool part about this saw is that we have some uh, detents that we can adjust from 22 and a half degrees to 45 degrees here. And then we can even go to the full bevel of 53 degrees. Now at 53 degrees, we have an inch and a half depth of cut. At 45, we have an inch and a quarter. All we have to do is lift this guy up, go to our detent. We are at 45 degrees. Let's see how it cuts. That's the same. We got all the power that we would have had in the 36 volt saw in a lighter package. Let's push this guy a little bit further. So we have a two by four screwed down to some half inch OSB. Let's see how this guy goes for a nice long cut. Something that I think is really nice about this saw is I'm not getting a lot of sawdust up in my face. It's getting pushed out to the side and it's not coming back at me, which is something that I really appreciate with these saws because sometimes you get it right up in your face pretty bad. Let's go for one more cut. So you can hear the saw working through this. It's bogging down slightly, but it's definitely not slowing down much in this cut. It's doing fantastic. So we've used this four by four a couple other times for some full depth of cuts on different saws. We got two and nine sixteenths, so we'll go down on this through some treated lumber. Let's see how it does. Obviously I'm pushing the saw slightly, but uh, that's absolutely a wonderful feel for the cut. Very little bogging, if any at all, and it just went right through that. Let's go for another cut. Again, something I appreciate is I'm not getting all that dust back up in my face, which is absolutely awesome. We're about at the end of what we can cut here, so let's set up something a little bit more challenging. So we have five sheets of half inch OSB here. It's gonna be approximately two and a half inches. We should have zero issue getting through all this, but it's gonna be full depth of cuts the full way. We're gonna keep cutting and just see how hot or what happens if we get any cutouts, anything like that, and just push this tool pretty far.
But I really appreciate cutting OSB again and not getting all these chips back in my face. It's absolutely awesome. Sounded like it was bogging down slightly at the end there. Let's see what happens. It's probably just the stress of the lumber coming down. Now, I'm gonna give myself that one. Uh, I have a line definitely coming back. I was not going straight there at all. Yeah, that cut's kinda of screwed up. That is not me on that one. There we have it. Actually, that just chewed up the full battery according to this. Either that or we've got this hot. Let's see what the battery charger tells us. Temperature. So we've kind of overheated that battery. Luckily enough, we have another battery here. Let's throw this guy in, and see if the stall will keep going. definitely slowing down a little bit feel the saw is a little bit warm so I'm giving it a chance here That's very impressive for a cordless saw. There's not many out in the market that are gonna take those kind of cuts and just keep going and going and going. Just impressive. After finishing up those last few cuts in spraying the saw off so I can come in, this battery is now charging so we're past the thermal issue and moving on. I don't think I've ever had a saw in the history of all of our reviews that has put up with that much abuse and kept going. And the reason I wanted to push it is because this has uh, protection inside of it that's supposed to take care of the saw and take care of the battery. I want to kind of test that out. Obviously, uh, we have one battery that seemed to give up the ghost faster than the other one. Maybe we we're pushing it harder. Maybe it's because I slowed down. I don't know. I'm going to continue to work with these two, figure out some things about them, and just make sure that they're both on the same level. Let's come in and take a look at the saw because there's more to it than what I went through.
prior to even going out and cutting. We took this saw, flipped it over, moved the bevel situation around, came back to zero, and was absolutely thrilled that we had a 90 degree angle here. That is something we're not finding in every saw out on the market, although this is a professional saw and we fully expect it. You can adjust this if something happens and it is not a 90 degree. But with that said, you have a pretty standard but rubber overmold here on the depth of cut slide. Everything slides great. So we went over outdoors. You do have this detent adjustment and there's an arrow here. It's currently sitting at 45. You have 53 here or 22 and a half. So if we just open this up, it's going to limit us to going to 22 and a half degrees. If we move it to 53, it's going to give us everything we have. If we go to 45, it's going to stop us there. That's one of the nicest systems I've seen for a detent adjustment. It's simple, gets us where we need to be, and it works quite well. The thing that I would watch out for is if we get any dust buildup underneath this saw where everything stops, it's going to adjust that, you know, and anytime you use a saw, you need to clean it up, make sure that you blow out that area, and then you'll come back to some very accurate detents. You have a dust port on this side that we did not use at all. You have to have a nice small vacuum attachment that's going to go on here. It's going to pop over and then you can suck out any of this uh, sawdust from this area. I like the positioning of this because all that sawdust is coming up here and if you have good suction, you're going to take it right out of the system immediately. Great placement. I uh, wish I had a vacuum here that would hook up to this guy and fit. You do have a rafter hook here, so this is going to be very popular for most people. And you have an ambidextrous safety that you have to push. It goes one way or the other. Either way, push that, then you can pull the trigger. The blade tools and everything like that are on the bottom of the saw, and your arbor lock is sitting up front. Very, very cool saw. I can't say enough good about it. I'm thrilled to have something like this in the shop that will actually put up with that amount of abuse. So if you look down in the comments, it's a guarantee that somebody's gonna ask, is this better than the Milwaukee rear handle saw? And does it have more power? I'm gonna come right out and say, no doubt. There's no way that that Milwaukee would have kept up and kept going through those cuts of OSB. It might have made one or two cuts like that and then probably given us some cutouts even with the 12 amp hour battery on it. Either way, I'm not saying that that saw is bad or good uh, because that cut is not going to happen over and over and over on the construction site. It just kind of shows what these saws can do and how long they can do it for. Also, the DeWalt flex volt. Somebody's going to come out and say, hey, and I'll tell you, I'm not sure if this saw is more powerful than the DeWalt flex volt, but I also don't believe the DeWalt flex volt would have continued to make those cuts in the OSB when I had them all stacked up. It would be 50-50. That's well worth trying out in another video, putting all that up against each other and seeing how long the protection system lets the saw go and how much heat each one builds up. One of the very cool things I like about this is while this battery is fairly warm, it's not hot. And I really think that's a testament to what Makita is doing to not only save the battery and save the tool, but also incorporating a ton of power in these units. So they're doing something right here because a lot of the other tools we have would have been extremely hot and not willing to keep going like this tool did. Overall, I like it. Do I have a few little things that bug me? And I think the little things that bug me are probably beyond what most people would look at. If we take this shoe up front, we are completely locked in, but there is a touch of movement here. You can hear it. It is not a huge deal. It is not enough to say it's in or out of square. It's more a lateral movement than anything. And it comes from this pin down at the bottom. And it doesn't matter where you're at, you're gonna get this movement here and it's just there. Is it gonna affect the cut? Not even probably a 10th of a degree. But I just have this wonderfully built saw with that little tiny movement there. 
I do like the fact that they separated my trigger finger from the rest of the fingers down below. I feel comfortable in that. I have larger hands. I'm not sure everyone will feel that way. If you have smaller hands, you might feel like that is a little bit uh, too much. The handle grip is great. I like the rubber overmold in the back and I like the rubber overmold here. In some cases, I wish we had it on the guard and maybe up here on front on the bevel adjustment. I'm not sure if you'd want it in those situations, but because I have it in other places, it leads me to want it in the others. And it's nice. I like the fact that it's not over 12 pounds, which is great. So it's very comfortable to use, very easy to go after and get into a deep cut. I like it. I like it a lot. So I'll leave some links in the description as to where you can find this in the kit, where you can find it bare tool, kind of go through all that so you guys can get some pricing. As always, please give us a like in this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.